Good morning, all. And Georgia, Vicky, Marianne, Connie, Dave, and then Luann, good to see you this morning. It really is. Oh, my. I think I'm pretty much done Christmas Eve service and ready to go. So today is like, again, it's like the day before the final. And you're like, all right, I'm all studied up. What do I do now? Today, I think I have to wrap presents, which is one of the worst things ever. So, I don't know where you all learn this talent. I don't know if there's like some special school or if like back in the day, you know, if it was like driver's ed where it was like you had your own special class, they teach you how to wrap presents. But clearly, I didn't have it because I can't do it very well. So, you know, it is, let's put it this way. I, I get it all, I get it into the paper, but then it's the sides. And more often than not, I'll fold it and then I have to like chop stuff off so like you don't get the white side of the paper poking out. Like this is a regular occurrence for me. I just can't, I just can't figure this out. So, so if you all, if you all are good at it, just know that you too have one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and you should be grateful for that. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Gift bags, yeah, I do that more than I more than I care to think about. But then, like, you see, the problem is, and Jenny, if you're if if you're on the if you're on prayer this morning, I apologize. <laughs> the problem is, I always feel like there's this moment of like disappointment where it's you know you don't get to open the present, you just kind of look inside. I don't know. <laughs> So I still think there's something to the to the act of tearing open your present. So I still try to do that. I put in a good faith effort, but today's not going to be good. I would I would live stream it for y'all. Y'all could get a good kick out of it. Except Jenny will log on and we'll see <laughs> what's going on. All right, enough of my trials and travails, friends. It is in our house. It is Christmas Eve Eve. Oh oh gosh. Good morning, Jenny. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, friends in our house it is christmas eve eve and so uh the day before christmas eve and uh and as we posted on mary and joseph's journey yesterday i pray too that your sort of joyful anxiety is building um and i know that it's i know that it's a heavy year and that many of us are still are carrying around things this morning that are very very heavy but i hope in some capacity um that you get to breathe in sort of the fresh air and the fun that is that is Christmas, um, and I hope that it is building for you in some way. Um, and if not, I pray that in the next two days um, that you would find something that, that kind of breathes life into you. Um, you know, I don't want to. Yeah, certainly there are there are concerns with the way we celebrate Christmas, but man, it is such a shot of joy in the arm um, when it comes across right. And I just pray that so many of you find um, find some of that in the next couple of days. And so, and I hope that uh, hope you're getting excited. I really, really am. But, uh, but I'm going to invite you to put that excitement on hold for a little while, not because prayer cannot be exciting, but because, uh, but because we want to lean into the, lean into the peace and the calm and the goodness that is the presence of God with one another. And so we are in the book Common Prayer. Let's see, it is December the 23rd. We are on page 75. We are also on the Common Prayer app and on commonprayer.net. And, uh, and if you're joining us live or joining us later, we are just grateful that you are joining us. Thank you so much. I, and I don't mean to break all this up, but Vicky, that's just not that's just not fair. <laughs> and so, and uh, and it looks like we need we need to take a moment um, and celebrate Stephen Dot fifty three years of uh, of 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 wedded bliss. Um, and so, Stephen Dot, just a, a joyful, joyful anniversary to you. Um, certainly, you have found something to celebrate, and certainly, you have been a model um, and a witness. Um, to what to what love lo looks like and so happy anniversary to the both of you and so friends without further ado let's quiet our hearts as we get ready to pray
O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. And today we pray our colleague for the week of December 20th, our prayer for the fourth week of Advent. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that eagerly we may receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And to our antiphon, come now, bless the Lord. He is our help and our shield. And holding this thought in our hearts, we pray the words of Psalm 115, verses 9 through 13. O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is your help. And your shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is your help and your shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is your help and your shield. The Lord has been mindful of us, and he will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord both small and great together. Come now, bless the Lord. He is our help and our shield. We continue reading in the book of Isaiah. Today we'll be jumping forward a little bit, going to a chapter 28, reading verses 9 through 22. To whom will he teach knowledge, and to whom will he explain the message? Those who are weaned from the milk, those taken from the breast? For it is precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. For by people of strange lips and with a foreign tongue, the Lord will speak to this people, to whom he has said, This is rest, give rest to the weary, and this is repose. Yet they would not hear. And the word of the Lord will be to them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they may go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, you scoffers, who rule this people in Jerusalem. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with Sheol we have an agreement. When the overwhelming whip passes through it, it will not come to us. For we have made lies our refuge, and in falsehood we have taken shelter. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am the one who has laid as a, who has laid as a foundation in Zion, a stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone of a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not be in haste. And I will make justice the line and righteousness the plumb line. And hail will sweep away the refuge of lies and waters will overwhelm the shelter. 
then your covenant with death will be annulled, and your agreement with Sheol will not stand. When the overwhelming scourge passes through, you will be beaten down by it. As often as it passes through, it will take you. From morning by morning it will pass through, by day and by night. And it will be a sheer terror to understand the message. For the bed is too short to stretch oneself on, and the covering too narrow to wrap oneself in. For the Lord will rise up as on Mount Perizim, as in the valley of Gibeon he will be roused, to do his deed, strange is his deed, and to work his work, alien is his work. Now therefore do not scoff, lest your bonds be made strong. For I have heard a decree of destruction from the Lord God of hosts against the whole land. This is the word of the Lord. And so this one is a is a complicated reading as as Isaiah and all the prophets can be at times. Um, and this is one that would probably require a little bit of a, a little bit of research on my part to say anything that I felt comfortable um, comfortable offering to you. But but I'm particularly drawn um, to verses to around twelve and thirteen. And there's this poetic reality that happens here that God says to the people, this is rest, give rest to the weary, and this is repose. Like this idea of serve one's neighbor, um, and that in doing so we find ourselves served, in offering rest to others, we find rest for ourselves, this sort of, this sort of thing, which is familiar to us. But Isaiah says, yet they would not hear, and the word of the Lord will be to them, and then we get this precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. And those words are really that line, precept upon precept, is, first of all, it's really odd in how repetitive it is. It's also really hard to read. Like, reading that, I'm just like, this is drudgery. And then it's like, oh, that's exactly it. That God says, here is the law. It's a, here's, here's my law. Give rest to the weary. And to the people of Israel, it is this constant drudgery. It's like going on. And like, that's how they hear it. This is true for us as well. Word of the Lord just offers such simple truth, and we hear it as this drudgery. We make it into this thing that is just, you know, that is awful, and that's exactly it. That's exactly the point. And so, in this way, we use the poetry of this to help us under explain, um, to help us explain the the precepts that are that are in it. And so, and Isaiah is calling the people out, saying, "Wait a second, like this is not hard. God is going to make. Um, God is going to. God is going to do this." It says, and I will make justice the line and righteousness the plumb line. God will make the straight lines. God will make things right. So we can we can continue to be encouraged by that, even as we're um, feel a little swamped, perhaps, by that reading this morning. And our second reading, uh, continuing as we read um, the story of the Annunciation, both of John the Baptist's birth and Jesus's birth. Um, we continue to read in the line of John the Baptist as we read Luke chapter 1, verses 67 through 80. Of course, we remember that uh, Zechariah was made mute um, after he doubted the possibility that, um, that Elizabeth could have a baby. Um, but today his tongue is loosed. And here's what we read. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sun shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, 
and he was in the wilderness until the day of his public appearance to Israel. This is the gospel of the Lord. And to our antiphon once again. Come now, bless the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Today we read the words of St. Augustine of Hippo, um, certainly one of the giants of, uh, of Christian theology and um, often of Western Christianity, um, but it's sneaky in that he's actually North African. Um, and there's a, I have a whole lot of reflections on that as well. But nevertheless... Um, we read from St. Augustine of Hippo, who wrote, No man has a right to lead such a life of contemplation as to forget in his own ease the service due his neighbor. Nor has any man a right to be so immersed in active life as to neglect the contemplation of God. No man has a right to lead such a life of contemplation as to forget in his own ease the service due his neighbor. Nor has any man a right to be so immersed in active life as to neglect the contemplation of God. And so we turn to our prayer list for today. Um, we do have a couple of updates. Um, I received word yesterday um, that Cart Denner, who we've been praying for, has had some, had some cancer issues. Um, they've discovered a new tumor. Um, and so CART is going to be having surgery in January to have that removed. Um, and we certainly hold CART and Anne, um, who I believe is joining us this morning. We will hold both of them in our prayers today for sure. Also received word um, that uh, Evelyn Schaefer um, continues to decline. Um, and as of as of this morning, um, I understand that she is still with us. But nevertheless, I know we've been praying for Evelyn, um, but she is she she does continue to decline. And so we certainly hold her close to our heart. And so those are the updates that I have for today. I invite you to join with me in a word of prayer. But we give you thanks for the simplicity of this gathering that we have. We join in, we read a couple of things, we say hi to one another, we celebrate whatever it is that needs to be celebrated today. We read a psalm, we read some passages of scripture, we pray for our friends and we go about our day. There's such a joy to the simplicity of these kinds of gatherings and such a simplicity to your people as they attempt to do your work in the world. And indeed, as we sing so many times, your law is love and your gospel is peace. Lord, the gospel you come to bring is a fairly simple one, love and peace. And so we would ask forgiveness for today for the times in which that simplicity leads us to boredom or allows our souls to kind of get groggy and to go to sleep, to stop reflecting on the goodness of your word. And Lord, as we draw to the end of draw near to the end of this Advent season, Lord, and certainly many of us are weary, both from the celebration of this time and also from the burdens that we carry. We pray, Lord, that the good news that we will hear over the next couple of days, the good news of a child who comes to show us the way of life, Lord, help it not to become precept upon precept and line upon line. Lord, make it new again for us. Make it alive again for us. And Lord, in hearing that story afresh and anew, may we be made new as well. Lord, help us to live out that simple message, to live it out one with another, to live it out so that others might be invited to be a part of that simple and yet glorious story of the coming of our King. And so Lord, we, because it's a simple gospel, we offer up our simple prayers for those who find themselves on our list this day, Lord. And we mourn that, uh, Lord, there is so much need in our community. And nevertheless, Lord, we thank you for the responsibility of tending to those with our prayers. And so we remember this day, Dave Cunningham, 
Tom Cross, Brian Cunningham, Don Penny, Ann Wilson, Chelsea Sire, Perry Lyons, Dave Morschbacher, Jeremy Dutterer, Alan Showalter, Sandy Suit, Savannah Price, Amber Ash, Karen Anderson, Cart Denner, for Susan, for an unspoken request, and for Carolyn Yost, Baby Lacey, Jean Snyder, David Miller, Margie Snyder, and an unspoken request, Joe Thornton, Jean Brothers, Richard and Deborah Hahn, Steve Moorhead, Joe Zentgraf, Anna Owings, Terry Shavius, Ray Owings, Jean Alexander, Rob Rickle, Jim Boone, Jennifer Ramsey, for Caitlin, Richard and Beatrice Hess, Ruth Hess Eichler, Linda Mayo, an unspoken request, Shirley Amsbacker, the family of Mel Pittenger, Donna Rill, the family of Lou Gillis, Russell Ruby, Mar <clears throat> excuse me, Marcia Brown, the family of Abe Weller, family of Bob Sipe, the family of Betty Harmon, Betty Heath, the family of David Thornton, for our dear sister Evelyn Schaefer, for Laurie Posey, for Bonnie, for the family of Bonnie Inkman, Sherry Armstrong, Carol Kinn, Bob Scott, the family of Aunt May, Richard Lindsay, Bruce Ludlow, John Cunningham, and Ronnie and Debbie Cunningham. Hear all these prayers, O oh God. Hear also the prayers that, then the prayer lists that find uh, that find a home in our hearts, and hear us as we pray. Friends, let us pray in the way that we have been taught to pray by our Savior, who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> o Lord, whose patience is beyond comprehension, we pray that you may never tire of helping us grow in faithfulness. Though we fail more than we succeed, Raise us up each morning to follow after you again. Guide us today for your glory's sake. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Amen, indeed, my friends. And so much to celebrate and to uh, and to enjoy today. Stephen Dot, really, um, you mean so much to this congregation, um, and you mean so much to the people that are on here. And so we truly do pray that today is a wonderful day of celebration for you both. Um, and uh, more to that point, let's keep the Stephen Dot celebration going along with the Vicky and Tommy celebration. So Vicky wrote out to me, uh, wrote to me, and said, uh, you know, said Sam, we totally understand you're going to take some time off, but if you want. Um, we can do Christmas and the day after Christmas prayer if, if you're okay with that. And I said, look, I'm, I'm completely fine with that. So my understanding is that, uh, that there will be prayer on Christmas morning and also on the day after Christmas. Just won't be led by me, um, which is, <laughs> thank goodness I get to hear somebody else's voice for a little while. So um, just wanted you to know that. So, I mean, if that's something you were looking forward to participating in uh, on, on those two days, um, you can plan on doing that. And if there's any changes, we'll let you know. Um, but prayer is going to continue. And we're really, really grateful. So to Stephen Dot, to Vicki and Tommy, thank you so much 
as always, for keeping this community going. Um, and indeed, this is one of the ways which we experience an actual community where it's all of us together um, doing, the, doing the shared work together and supporting one another. So I'm very, very grateful for that. And so friends, whatever your day looks like today, hopefully it's better than Sam wrapping presents. Hopefully it's more productive than Sam wrapping presents. Um, whatever it looks like, I pray it's a good one for you. Until next time, peace and good, y'all.